good. We've been, I mean, it's been a wonderful week. God has been good. He's been supplying all our needs, being our strength, support, you know, supplying for all our times of need. He's a good God. Amen. And we've been talking about God's wisdom. And, you know, last week, someone said, I don't know what you spoke. It takes wisdom to understand God's wisdom. <laughs> So I'm encouraging you, listen with an intent to understand. I'm sure it will make sense to you. Amen. What is wisdom? Wisdom is a fitting application of knowledge, right? We all have information. We have the information about what to do, how to do, you know, all these things. We have those informations, but how to apply it in your day-to-day -day life is wisdom. Right? Like, my son suddenly, I mean, you ask him what he wants to buy, he used to say he needs to get that R8 or R1, I don't know, that big, you know, uh, super sport bike, super power bike. So the, he knows about that bike, but that wisdom is how to ride it, when to, you know, rev it up, when to go. That takes wisdom to use it properly, right? So, knowledge is not enough, but how to use knowledge is what is more needed. That's why Proverbs Solomon is writing, in all you're getting, get wisdom and understanding. And then he's constantly encouraging the people to get wisdom, to listen to wisdom. And he's also writing, wisdom is crying out at the street corners. It is crying at the city places. In another word, wisdom is is a factor that helps us to do the right thing at the right time. You know, sometimes we do the right thing at the wrong time. The wrong, the wrong thing at the right time, you know. It, it's about applying what we know at the right time. It takes wisdom. So, first it needs to start with the right kind of knowledge or the right kind of information that we should have. How many of us have the right kind of knowledge? How many of us are filling, us, filling ourselves with the right information? Do we have the right things entering our minds? Are we storing up good things that is actually beneficial? You know, in this world, in this time, where everything is available at the fingertip, any information you want to know, you know, those days, uh, deep vein thrombrosis, I, I hope I'm saying it right. If a doctor says that, nobody would have had a clue. But recently, my father-in-law had that. And then immediately, you know, I was sitting in Rajapalim, so went online, got the right information about what it, what it is all about. It is there, you know, we are able to pull out everything. But sometimes our life becomes such a bin box that we fill ourselves with junks than what is actually needed. Information which is not needed. And we get so excited. You know, morning, how many of you go to the restroom with cell phones? I mean, I, I used to do that. But after talking about wisdom, I'm keeping my phone out. It's about doing the right thing, right? So I said, the right thing is to keep my phone down so I will come out early. <laughs> you will not sit there for hours. And when you sit there, I'm sure some of you could relate. You will be going through article after article, information after information, just scrolling. And it just keeps coming. It becomes an addiction. You just don't know why you're looking into all of that. But you look into that. One news after another news. One information after another information. But is it really needed? Am I having the right kind of knowledge that is getting into me? What is the first thing you do in the morning? What is the priority in the morning? What is the kind of information you letting in? You know, this mind is the biggest, you know, information absorber that we need to be careful about. It could be in a relationship, regarding a job, 
regarding your life, regarding your finances, regarding your future. You know, there are many voices that is voicing its opinion about you, about your life, about your tomorrow. There are many things that is voicing its opinion. But what is the thing, what is the information that you are hearing to? We need to be careful about it. Don't heed to doubts. Don't give in to doubts. Don't give in to people's opinion. Don't give in to other people's information that is not right. Don't give in to other people's experiences which is not right. The right kind of information, I'm telling you, the best information that you could ever have is what God thinks about you. Amen? What God talks about you. What God has spoken about you. Yesterday I was in a prayer cell and I was talking, saying this. You know, God's promises, when we talk about God's promises, the Bible says, out of the fullness of the heart, a man speaks, right? And all the promises of God, where has he spoken from? Out of the fullness of his heart, right? So when you talk about all the promises of God, it means God has thought about you and his heart is filled with good things about you and that's what he has spoken through the prophets. And am I getting enough of that? Am I spending enough time with God's thoughts about me, God's mind about me, God's purposes about me? Am I meditating on that? Am I filling my mind? Am I allowing my mind to absorb God's thinking about me? You need to have the right kind of information. Amen? Don't worry about what people say. Don't worry about what people are thinking about you. Don't worry about what sometimes even your own opinions. Don't worry about it. Think about what God has spoken over you. Meditate on what God has declared over you. Amen? Right information leads to right kind of knowledge that you and I should have. So now, this applying this right kind of information is wisdom. You know, last week we spoke about how Solomon, you know, was able to bring out to the light who the real mother is. Two mothers come with one child. I mean, both had children. And one child died. And these two mothers are claiming for that one child. So everybody, I'm sure, would have known who the real mother is. I'm sure. You know, everybody would have known who the real mother is. They would have had the knowledge to distinguish who the real mother is. But the thing is, how to bring to light and to establish who the real mother is. And he had to use wisdom there. The fitting application of that knowledge. He said, bring me a sword. Let's part this child into two. Let, and then let's give each mother, you know, half a child. Is that even possible? Is that even right? No. But you know, when he immediately, when he said that, immediately the real mother jumped up and said, no, 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 no don't kill my child. See, he had to establish it. It took wisdom to establish who the real mother is. In spite of everyone sitting there who probably knew who the real mother is, nobody could come with a solution but Solomon, one of the wisest king. He was able to establish who the real mother is because of wisdom, the fitting application. You and I are given that ability. Amen? To apply wisdom in our day-to-day -day life. Because in Corinthians, 1 Corinthians, we read, Christ in us is the power of God and the wisdom of God. So you and I have the power of God and the wisdom of God. Do you have the wisdom of God? Yes. Why? Not because I did something right, but because it is given to me because of my faith in Christ Jesus. So you and I are walking wisdom people, living wisdom people in this world. Having the ability to use the knowledge that we have at the right time, at the right place, in the right way. Amen. So now I'm going to show you the characteristic of a wise man. Amen. 
how we can function in this wisdom, how we should operate in this wisdom, how, how we should kickstart this wisdom inside of me. You know, let's turn to 1 Kings chapter 3, 7 till 9. Now, O Lord my God, you have made your servant king in place of my father, David. But I'm only a little child and do not know how to carry out my duties. Your servant is here among the people you have chosen, a great people, too numerous to count a number. So give your servant a discerning heart to govern your people and to distinguish between right and wrong. For who is able to govern this great people of yours? He's saying, give your servant a discerning heart to govern your people and to distinguish between right and wrong. This is wisdom. A discerning heart that distinguishes between right and wrong. Wisdom. And you know what I want to share with you is this. You know, you look at day, uh, Solomon there, God is asking him, do you want long life? Do you want riches? Do you want the life of your enemies? Do you want victories in battle? God is telling him, Solomon, ask what you want. But Solomon asked this, give me the ability to distinguish between right and wrong. No, the thing we need to understand about Solomon here is this, his mind was set on doing the right thing at the right time. Amen? What is it that we get from Solomon here? His heart was not filled with, how can I become rich? How can I become a great king? How can I win over my enemies? How can I do this? You know, his heart was not set on that. His heart, he has set his mind on doing the right thing at the right time. See, this is the characteristic of a wise man who desires to do the right thing at the right time. Amen? It starts with you. Wisdom doesn't start with God. It starts with you. Because God has placed wisdom inside of you in Christ Jesus. But my desire should be, I need to set my mind on doing the right thing at the right time. Where is your mind today? What is your mind set on today? Where is your mind fixed today? For some people, it is on, you know, you talk to them. It's only about money. I've heard about people, you know, oh, one of my friend's neighbor, it seems he went and asked him, so what thing you do? I mean, what do you do for a living? It seems he said, where money is, there I will be. Where is his mind? On money. For some people, it's about honor. You need to respect me. You need to honor me. You need to give me respect. You need to call me sir. You know, one day I called my brother. Young, my younger brother. So I asked him, how is Andrea? That is my, uh, you know, my sister-in-law. Of course, younger than me. He immediately, you know, lost his school. How can you call her Andrea? I asked him, what am I supposed to call? My dear sister, my dear brother's wife. You know, that honor. Please edit that. <laughs> the wonderful thing. You know, for some people, it's about all these petty things. Oh, they didn't give me respect. They didn't say good morning to me. They didn't say good evening to me. They didn't call me uncle, auntie. They didn't call me pastor. So what? Call me prince. You know? It's about having so many things fixed in their mind that they end up not doing the right thing. But here Solomon, in spite of all the challenges he's facing, you know, the, the historians say he became king when he was... 20 years old, a young guy sitting in the throne, sitting on the throne, having a big nation with great legacy, and he didn't worry about riches, he didn't worry about anything about his enemies. You know, he said, I need to do the right thing at the right time. I want to distinguish between right and wrong. That is how I should be established. That is how I want my kingdom to be established. That is how my legacy should be established. Solomon, a wise man who knew what to do at the right time, how to do the right thing at the right time. His mind was fixed on the right thing. Amen? That is the first step 
for wisdom. Let me show you another person in the Bible. Turn with me to Daniel chapter 10, verse 12. It's talking about Daniel's vision and an angel appears to him and then he's talking to Daniel. Then continued, then he continued, do not be afraid, Daniel. The angel is talking to Daniel. Then he continued, do not be afraid, Daniel, since the day that you set your mind to gain understanding. Do you read that? What did Daniel do? What did Daniel do? He set his mind to gain where is your mindset today? You know, we talk about grace mostly. The way we talk about, you know, what God is doing for you. Today, it might look like a deviation. The way we are talking about you. The way I'm talking about you. The way I'm talking about us. My life. My style. You know, my living. You know, I'm talking to you today. Where is your mindset? On what have you set your mind? Yeah, Daniel, it, God, the angel of God is talking to Daniel. Since the day you set your mind to gain understanding. Have you set your mind to gain understanding? And what kind of understanding have you set your mind to gain? Since the day you set your mind to gain understanding. This is where it all starts. Amen. As you get up in the morning, set your mind to gain understanding. This is the day that the Lord has made that I am going to help, by the help of God, I'm going to gain understanding about my situation. I'm going to gain understanding about my circumstances. I'm going to gain understanding about over my challenges. I'm going to gain understanding over my children's future. I'm going to gain understanding. No, it is about setting your mind. But we have so many things happen in mind. There was a beautiful illustration, you know, in the life, as we read the kingdom of David, about the kingship of David. Abnon is the oldest son of David. And he set his eyes on Absalom's sister. And he eventually violates that girl. And after violating her, she's saying, see, since, now we've done this, you should get married to me. And he's saying, no, I don't want you. Get out of my house. The, I mean, the hatred after he enjoyed her was much greater than the love he had for her. That's what the Bible says. He chucked her out. And then they show the thing about Absalom. Let me show that to you. Uh, turn with me to, uh, let's read Second Samuel chapter 13, 32. It says, but Jonadab, Son of Shimea, David's brother, said, My Lord should not think that they killed all the princes. Only Amnon is dead. This has been Absalom's expressed intention ever since the day Amnon raped his sister Tama. What was his intention? What has he set his mind on? To kill. And it was quite some time. His mind was set on taking revenge. What was his mind set on? Taking revenge for Amnon's violation of his sister. Is that the right thing? Check your mind today. If your life is not having the help of God, you know, if you think that God is not in that, don't check God, check you. Where is my mind set on? Am I set, have I set my mind on the things that God has set his heart upon? Is revenge from God? Do you think God will help, will want you to take revenge on people, those who don't respect you, those who have violated you, those who have mistreated you? No, you don't have to do that. You don't have to justify. You don't have to vindicate yourself. God will do it. That is God's thing. Let him do his thing. Your thing is, I will set my mind in knowing God, understanding God, and having the ability from God to do the right thing. 
And if you go back to Daniel, he's saying, you know, the angel is saying, chapter 10, since the first day that you set your mind to gain understanding and to humble yourself before your God, your words were heard and I have common response to them. You can put it to silence. You know, when you set your mind, we see God responds to it. Do you want God to come and respond? Set your mind on the right thing. Amen? Set your mind on doing the right thing. He will do the rest. He will grant you favor. He will give you the strength. He will give you the ability. He will give you the happening inside of you. He will give you the ideas to do the right thing at the right time. Your mind should be, I'm going to set my mind on doing the right thing. Not in response to what people say. Not responding to how they react to you. No, my thing is, I want to do the right thing. You know, it could be in relationships. I, you know, when I got married, I always have this complaint. Oh, this about me. Your father said this about me. Your mother said this. I am, you know, say I've learned it all. I'm not, I won't say I've learned it all. I'm learning. So I'm sharing from my experiences. You know, I, my father, you, why did your father say this? Then it will become like, why did your father say this? So it happens in many marriages. You know, your father is greater, my father is greater, your mother is greater, my mother. It happened. Okay, one day, Susan and I sat down, we spoke about it, we said, you know what? Let the fathers be fathers. Let us be children to them. But when it comes to us, let us be a proper husband and wife who love and care for each other. We cannot change them, but let's change ourselves and go. Doesn't that make a big difference? You know, if you're going to set your mind on, oh, I'm not going to talk to them. Who's on the losing side? Me. You know, setting your mind on doing the right thing. You know, let me share it. I'm, I'm picking it up all from the scripture. Turn with me to uh, Genesis 39, verse 1 and 2 and 3. Now Joseph had been taken down to Egypt. Potiphar, an Egyptian, who was one of Pharaoh's officials, the captain of the guard, bought him from the Ishmaelites who had taken him there. Joseph is going as a slave to Egypt and Potiphar is buying. The Lord was with Joseph and, pros and he prospered and he lived in the house of his Egyptian master. When his master saw that the Lord was with him, that the Lord gave him success in everything he did, Joseph found favor in his eyes and became his attendant. Potiphar put him in charge of his household and he entrusted to his care everything he owned. You know, always we used to talk about God was with Joseph. And we also used to say, God is with you. You will find favor. You, but we forget to understand, you know, why was God with Joseph there? Why was God with Joseph? You know, Joseph didn't get tied because of his circumstances. He didn't get tied. He didn't get bogged down because his brothers sold him. He didn't get bogged down because his brothers did bad things to him. He was one. He said, I will be doing what I know and I will be doing it right. He was a doer of the right thing. Can you imagine? He went into Egypt from a different clan, from a different upbringing, you know, not knowing the customs of an Egyptian household, he steps into that house as a slave boy and then slowly he rose the ranks and he became the one to whom his master entrusted everything. Why? Because he was focused on doing the right thing. That's what it says. God was with him in everything. He did 
Why? Because his mind was. We saw in Daniel, you know, in response to his mind, the angel came down. God sent his angel. If your mind is fixed on doing the right thing, saying the right word, being the right person, functioning the right way that God wants you to be, I'm telling you, you will have God by your side. You will have God working with you. You will have God working inside of you, giving the ideas that people will look at and say, this is wisdom. This is God's wisdom. I'm sure he arranged so many things right in Potiphar's house that Potiphar knew nothing that was happening in his house. He said, Joseph, I give it all into your hands. Who was he? A slave boy. He was a slave boy. Let me show you something else about wisdom also. You know, how a person of wisdom will be. Turn with me to Proverbs. In this age of technology, we forget to bring Bibles and also turn Bible. <laughs> because everything is there, right? No. Bring your Bible. Turn your Bible. Take notes. Write it down. When you write it down, when you mark it, when you go home, at the right time, you will know where you have marked it and you can turn, you can read it, you can go back to that. And you will never say, I don't understand. <laughs> okay. Uh, Pro Proverbs 16, 23. A wise man's heart guides his mouth. What? Who is a wise man? A wise man is a person who has set his mind on doing the right thing at the right time. Right? A wise man is a person who has set his heart on doing the right thing at the right time. So a wise man's heart guides his mouth. So now what happens? His mouth is guided by whom? By God's spirit living inside of you. The spirit of Jesus inside of you. The life inside of you. The righteousness inside of you. The wisdom inside of you. The health inside of you. Good words spoken at the right time is a strength to the body, strength to the broken bones. You know, it is inside of you. That's what you will bring Once I went to one of my known friends, that time we had uh, our Maruti Zen. I told him, Uncle, I want to change my car. You know what's the first thing he said? Why do you want a big car? They don't motivate you, they don't encourage you, they will demotivate you. Why do you need a big car? You should be simple. Why? Should I not buy a car? So if somebody is demotivating you, don't listen to them. If somebody is motiv motivating you, encouraging you to gain greater heights, you know, I'm not asking you to, you know, do, uh, go and be lavish, borrow like crores of rupees and, you know, lavish, not like that. I'm, I'm speaking about motivators who will guide you who will encourage you who will you know promote good things about you but in few years he went and got a big car i'm wondering he told me not to buy one now why should i not so don't look at all these people who will always be negative oh this will not happen you go talk to them oh this will not happen for you oh it is not good for you but whereas if you had spoken to me, Prince, you know, wait your time, plan, look at what you want to buy, plan your finances. Do you have enough money to pay your EMIs? That is wisdom, you know, that is guiding you. Because the next part says, a wise man's heart guides his mouth and his lips promote instruction. See, I'm sure that's what Joseph did in Potiphar's house. He was a wise man, you know, who set his mind on doing the right thing at the right time. 
And what happened? He was promoting instruction to the household there. And slowly he gained ascendancy in that household. From being the slave boy, he became the person who had control of an entire house. That's what a wise man is all about. And that's what you as a wise man, a wise woman could become. Gaining control. Amen. Being in that ascend, in that, in that, uh, you know, stepping up the ladder of levels more than anyone else. See, more than your education, more than whom you know, more than how you can, you know, uh, are in favorable with people. If you have God on your side, nobody can stop you from gaining prominence. Amen. Amen? It starts with setting your mind the right thing and doing the right thing at the right time. You know, a young rich man came to Jesus. He said, what should I do to gain eternal life? See, what is he asking? What should I do? I'm also warning you about certain things, okay? What should I do to gain eternal life? See, you also asked, what should I do? I mean, there's nothing wrong in asking, what should I do to gain eternal life? But then Jesus knew his mind. Because his mind was, I have done everything. What? His mind was? Because when Jesus told him, you know, go feed the poor, go do this. He said, Lord, I have kept the commandments. I have done everything. His mind, he's, he's a person who wants to do right thing, but his mind was not right. His mind was not right. Then God knew how to bring him out. He said, go sell all that you have and give it to the poor. The next minute, he, the Bible says, his face fell down and then he went sad because he had huge amount of riches and wealth which he could impart because his mind was not on the right thing. His mind was on the riches. So he did everything to prove to people, I can do all this. But his mind was not right. Set your mind right. Amen? Set your mind right. You should be a person I mean, it, this is how it should be. I should be a person who desires to do the right thing. What are you doing as children? Am I doing the right thing as a son-in-law to a father-in-law? Am I doing the right thing as a, as a daughter-in-law to your mother-in-law to your father-in-law? Am I doing the right thing as a husband, as a wife, as, a, uh, as an in-charge in your office, as a lead in your office, as a manager in your office? Oh, whoever, whatever function you are in, am I doing the right thing? I want to be a person who will be doing the right thing. Your mind should be set on that. And when you set your mind, I'm telling you, you will have the Spirit of God helping you to instruct to bring out the doing that people will look at you and say is a wise man amen is a wise man as a wife building the house as a husband providing for the house in a right way being a strength being an encouragement to each other how right way as a son to your parents as a father to your children you know set your mind on doing the right thing and you don't worry about you know how will I do it it is God who promotes wisdom amen he is a source of wisdom he will empower you he will enable you he will strengthen you he will send his spirit to be your strength so he will give you the ability to do the right thing. You don't have to worry about, you know, the doing part. He will take care of the doing part. Your thing is setting your mind. You know, there is one verse, I will finish with that. The Bible says, he chose the foolish of the world to confound the wise of this world. That means you and I have a wisdom that is beyond par with this world. You know, there is a slab that is set, world's wisdom. The wisdom of God is beyond that. And that is the wisdom that is, that is what you and I possess. 
And when you function in that wisdom, nobody can withstand you. Amen? Nobody can stand against you. No powers, nothing can stand against you. And it starts with setting your mind. Can we stand to our feet? Our gracious Heavenly Father, thank you for this beautiful day. As we step out from this place, I pray you will go with each and every one. They will have the angels helping them, the Spirit of God guiding them, you, your wisdom prompting them from within as they set their mind on doing the right things at the right time. Let them be known as the Josephs, Solomons, and Daniels in this world. Let people see the wisdom manifesting through them for life, for people's circumstances. As they go through challenges, let wisdom come out of them and instruct them to help them to do the right thing at the right time. Let them gain ascendancy. Let them gain promotions through wisdom which is functioning inside of them. Be glorified in their lives and through their lives. Holy Spirit, I pray this word will bear hundredfold fruit. I bless them with goodness and mercy, with health and wealth, with promotion and protection and provision through this week. Thank you for the angels who go with us. Thank you for the blood which covers us. Thank you for your peace which passes all understanding, guarding and guiding every heart and mind. Be glorified in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.